Simon is based in a large hostel complex in a township in the Greater Johannesburg area. It's a bustling place with people coming and going, and the meeting was to be carefully choreographed. We made a phone call near the entrance and then we waited. And after some time, two men emerged and they signaled to my intermediary and me. One of these men was old and scrawny, the other squat and powerfully built. And after brief introductions, I was banished to my car while a discussion ensued about the boundaries for the interview. And then a younger man appeared from behind a nearby pavement restaurant where scores of chickens were sizzling over a braai. I was summoned back. We had bought one of the chickens and standing in a group we shared the bird, breaking the meat off with our hands and dipping it in a sauce. Not a word was spoken. The title of the book is Hitman for Hire, Exposing South Africa's Underworld. And it seems actually quite a dramatic title in the context of South Africa when you think of hitmen elsewhere in the world. It's not really been something that has been part of the South African discussion, but in fact uh, the phenomenon of hits and assassinations have become u ubiquitous to, to parts of the criminal economy and the political economy in the context of South Africa. And that was some of the spur for writing the book because in my work around the world there had been a sense that assassinations, at least in Latin America for example, were important symbols of the underworld, violence used by mafia groups to control and to regulate criminal markets. And so the idea of the book was to say in South Africa, well South Africa has such a high murder rate, uh, around 30 uh, per 100,000, uh, in some places much higher, in some communities above 100, above 100,000. That's phenomenal. I mean, that is at Central American levels. Can those murders just be put down to uh, social consequences or, or socioeconomic uh, uh, relations, as is often the case? You know, driven by poverty, of course, those are issues. But it seemed to me, at least, that there was a set of real, what you would elsewhere call mafia drivers, people who controlled criminal markets. They used assassinations to control criminal markets. And out of those pools of organized crime, if, if, uh, for want of a better word, came people who were trained in violence. Not professionally, although they are also professionals, so there's a scale of hitmen in the context of South Africa, but that these people are paid to carry out killings and those killings are used to regulate political, economic and to some extent social life in South Africa. And that's what the book's about, and the book is based on interviews with hitmen and hitwomen. Uh, it's about the engagement between hitmen and the places in which they are. It's the story of hitmen really as expendable people in this economy. The sense uh, that there are, there is a scale of professionalism. Some people on the very high end, some people on the very low end, the pricing of hits. So it's, it's about hitmen and the, and the context in which they live and work, and it's about the economies where they operate. And those economies are crucial uh, to to hitmen being used in a variety of other ways. So to give uh, uh, just a couple of examples, we as a, as a project at the University of Cape Town started to collect uh, evidence of where hits had occurred. And if you just look, and that was drawn largely from press coverage through a particular methodology, the book explains that in an appendix because that's not so much about the story uh, of, of hits. You look at the taxi industry in South Africa, that has been regulated by violence, by paid hits, but those hits or hitmen in the taxi industry have filtered into a number of other criminal uh, uh, economies. So that's been crucial to defining uh, the, 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 the broader underworld in, in the context of South Africa. The subtitle Exposing South Africa's Underworld has two meanings in, in the context of the book. The first is that South Africa's underworld is often spoken about but not really well understood, so really to expose it. But the underworld has been concentrated with a number of prominent names, prominent uh, high-level uh, uh, people in that context. Uh, Radovan Kretscher has been a huge name in the South African media discussions. So what the book tries to say is, of course, he has been part of this uh, criminal network, but there are a range of other players. And the book tries to introduce uh, the reader to those multiplicity of players. And that means, the second meaning, exposing the broad nature of the South African underworld uh, and its dynamics, its evolution. And I think if there's one important conclusion amongst others around uh, the underworld in South Africa uh, is that the underworld is closely connected to the upper world. The two are sewn together. 
the sense that there's a, a sort of a, a hidden criminal economy is often a misnomer. These things are, are woven together and there are actors, there are nodes, there are people who cross between the two and that's outlined within in the book. The second issue is that this is evolving. And in fact, some of the violence in the underworld, rooted as it is in its connections to the upper world, is because the underworld, in my argument at least, is still very fragmented. There's not a single set of mafia groups. There are some powerful actors, as the book outlines. But that, that fragmentation is driving violence, driving assassination. And the important point that, that I want to make is that this is something that has to be dealt with, uh, primarily because the book makes the argument that a key area of the upper world, and that's the state, the state's intelligence arms, the state's policing apparatus, have been drawn into the underworld. They act for the underworld in some cases. They also propagate violence. This is not unique to South Africa, but in a sense, uh, this is the area where the en enormous policy interventions need to come about. I don't want to say it's too late in some aspects, but the position is, is pretty serious, is that when the state and parts of the underworld become entangled, the state gets shaped by the nature of the underworld, and it's very, very hard to reverse that process. So that's the story of the book, and uh, I have tried hard, I don't know whether I've succeeded, but I have tried hard to tell these bigger questions of mafia development, both in comparison to uh, comparative terms, how does South Africa look in relation to other countries, but also in individual terms, to tell the story of individual hit people, uh, their role in the underworld. Uh, each chapter begins with a hit, each chapter tells the story of people who have been killed, uh, and the people who have been killed, the stories are very sad. They are civil society activists, they are politicians uh, at the local level. Seventeen mayors have been killed uh, in hits. That does not mean uh, that there are not more mayors that have been killed, but hits as defined as a very targeted, paid-for killing. Uh, that's, the, that's the story of the book, based on data, based on individual stories, based on a comparative experience. So I'm hoping the book is read as a cautionary tale of where we've got. Uh, if we don't do something, what organized crime in South Africa could look like in future and the importance of us responding.